action. You're in the helicopter, it's loud, you got your fins on, your wetsuit, mask, snorkel, ready to go, and then you jump. Danger. You can hear the ice hissing and cracking all around you. Adventure. When you cross the equator, you have to ask King Neptune's permission to become a shellback. You're listening to Sea Story. Episode 43, The Question. Hi, my name is Zachary Williams, and I'm a nuclear machinist mate first class. I am from Milford, Connecticut, and this is my sea story. I could go into all types of stories, really, but uh, the one that sticks out to me the most is the story of me proposing to my wife. It was actually this past deployment in 2018. We went on a uh, Pacific tour, seven and a half months or so, hit all the Middle Eastern ports like the Dubais, the Bahrain, Singapore's. I met my wife on the ship. I would go outside once in a while, get some fresh air, get the ocean in, get the breeze and whatnot. So I saw her and I recognized her from the pipeline because she was a nuke like me at one point. About a week later, we uh, pull into Bahrain. There's this place called the Sandbox, which is like the little Bahrain base they have there. It's a good time. And uh, all of a sudden I get run into, tackled. I drop everything in my hands, and then I look to the right and I see Sandra. I mean, I'm a pretty big guy. Like, I'm, I was like 290 pounds back then, and she almost took me off my feet. And she's like, hey, like, how's it going? And we just end up talking for a little while. She's around 5'7", you know, a little brunette with green eyes. Super cute, soft-spoken, but she could hit pretty hard, right? So she's good. It almost took me off my feet. We were just friends for a really long time, honestly, like six months or whatever, until I like mustered up the strength finally. And it's like, I want to go out or something like that. I want to say immediately I knew she was the one. So we went out, whatever. The next thing you know, we're on deployment. We've been together for like a year and a half at this point. I'm just thinking about the next steps in life, you know, the future. As soon as we started hanging out, as soon as we started dating, that whole time, I don't think there was a moment where I wasn't 100% sure that I was gonna end up marrying her at one point. So I had this elaborate plan for deployment. I went on deployment without a ring in my pocket, right? I had nothing, but I knew what I wanted to do, and that was to propose. So we go to uh, Dubai, and there's a very famous place there called the Golden Souk. You walk around and all types of people are walking up to you trying to sell you uh, anything from watches to bags. But there was this one place that was recommended to me by a chief on the ship. And uh, he was like, hey, if you want to get a ring made, you go here. You'll get way better quality and it won't be as expensive as it is in the United States, right? So I took his advice and I went there. I think it was called Palace's Jewelry and uh, the Golden Souk. All the chiefs bought all their jewelry for their wives and whatever there every time we went out, so there's no lie that this was the place to go. I only had three days in Dubai. I went there and I was like, hey, I need this ring crafted for me. We weren't sneaky about it. She knew what was going on because I didn't know her ring measurement or anything. I didn't want to get the wrong size ring in another country and then have to mess around with it when we get back to the States and try and get the right size, right? So I took her there. And I blindfolded her in the souk and I like grabbed her and I like brought her in there pretty much. And the dude was like trying to get her ring size and stuff and she was all excited. They were able to finish it on time. They finished it like two hours before I had to be back on the ship before we were pulling out again. We just barely made it. We cleared the brow like 10 minutes before Liberty expired. And then we were going to the next port or whatever, just doing circles out there and doing the good work. The ring was achieved. It was acquired and very important to me. So now is like the planning portion. The next port we were gonna hit was Singapore. Very like famous, lots of famous landmarks there. Uh, great, great city, great people, lots and lots of culture. Probably one of my favorite ports I've ever been to. I knew that this was the place. I had overnight liberty for all four nights. Didn't have watch or nothing while I was in port. Just went out for all four days and had all this time to plan and prep. Around the second night, we were in our hotel and she's like, all right, where do you want to go to dinner? I'm like, let's go to the Marina del Sands. 
super famous landmark in Singapore. It's that building with the three towers and there's that giant thing on top with the overfall pool and stuff like that, really cool. We didn't really have seats, but we had like a special section cordoned off and we got a seat right against the railing of the overlook, looking at everything. So I was like, this is coming together like perfectly, better than I could have ever expected. It's beautiful weather out, you know, the sun's setting and stuff behind all the buildings and you can see everything, right? There's a feeling of being almost invincible. This is one of the dopest moments of my life right here. This is it. So we sit down and I'm pretty sure she knew exactly what was happening. I like reached my pocket and I uh, forgot the ring in the hotel. I wanted to drop my utensils and immediately jump off the Marina del Sands. I was like, this is it for me. I'm doomed. And I immediately confessed, oh, I messed up. She was like, what? So I was going to do this whole thing where I like proposed to you and stuff and it was going to be great, but I uh, left the ring in the hotel room and she's like, classic. Just like laughing it off, you know, we both laughed it off and I was like, you know, this is going to be like the perfect thing. We had a great dinner, great time. Go back to the hotel room, you know, go to bed. And then we wake up the next day, we spend the whole day at the pool and it's just sunny. It's like an oasis, this pool area by this hotel too. It was absolutely gorgeous. And there's palm trees and stuff all around you. It's very uh, secluded. The pool is awesome and we're all just like hanging out. It's just her and I, no one else is out there. and. That's immediately where I like proposed. I kind of just shot it out from my mouth, you know, it's like, hey, uh, do you want to get married? She picked it up. Did you just propose? I'm like, yeah, like that's it right there. And I was like, okay, this is great. We enjoyed the rest of our time in Singapore, went to Hawaii, and then immediately went, got back to San Diego after that and started planning out our marriage. There is absolutely no way on my own time or money or profession that I would have been able to propose in a place like that. But just having the ability to have a life event occur in a place like that was a really huge experience in my life. Never would have had that if it wasn't in the Navy. It makes you more uh, appreciative of your surroundings and the opportunities that you've had. No one's doing this, but I am. I'm getting paid to do it. I'm having a good time. I met my wife too, so that's pretty cool, yeah. To hear more stories like mine, subscribe to Sea Story today. Coming next. The idea of really doing something dangerous is very attractive to me. Sea Story is brought to you by America's Navy. Learn more at Navy.com.